Hi there, in this video we're going to cover one of the fundamental topics of GIS, which is understanding the similarities and differences between raster and vector data sets. So raster and vector are our two most common data types, and they're very different in terms of what we can do with them um, and how they look. So it's important to understand those differences. So let's dive straight in and start off with vector data. So vector data is made up of three key types. Points, which can be connected to form lines, which in turn can be joined up to create polygons. So points, lines, and polygons are our three types of vector data. Now, because it's made of points connected with lines, essentially coordinates, no matter how much we zoom in on our vector data, it still looks nice and sharp and crisp on our screen. And that's quite different to raster data. So if I turn on a raster data layer here, when we're zoomed out, it looks nice and sharp. But essentially, raster data is like a digital photograph. So it's made up of a series of pixels. And as we zoom in on the screen, we can see that the quality of the data starts to break down and the individual pixels making up our image become visible. So while vector data looks clear, no matter what our zoom level, raster data is designed to work at more specific zoom levels and will degrade if we zoom in too far. But it's not just the appearance that's different between raster and vector data types. So if we go back to our vector data again, one of the most useful features of vector data is that it not just not only displays our data on the screen, but we can also add attributes to this data. So we have an attribute table with a number of columns um, that link to our, our data sets. And each row within this attribute table relates to a feature on our screen. So as we select different rows, we can see that different features become selected within our GIS layer. And all of our types of vector data have attributes associated with them. Um, so if we open the point layer here, we can see it just has a single column within the attribute table, um, providing an identifier. If we open up the roads layer, we can see that there's multiple attribute columns giving us identifiers, road names, road numbers, classifications. Um, and attributes tables can contain all types of information, um, both text and numeric values. And this allows us to carry out various different types of analysis, selecting subsets of the data using those attributes. Now, raster data is a little bit more complicated. Now, I've sometimes heard raster data sets referred to as dumb data. Um, we can't do much with it. We can't change things. And I'd argue that that's only true to a point. Now, there's various different types of raster data set that we might come across. So the first example I've got here is a raster base map. And this is reasonably dumb data. There's not too much that we can change about this base map without going into some kind of image editing software like Photoshop and changing the colors, turning it black and white, um, for example. There are some changes that we can make um, within GIS, if I figure out which tile I've got on the screen at the moment. In our GIS properties, we can change things like brightness, saturation, um, we can make it grayscale. So there are various things we can change about this base map um, within GIS. But there's not too much useful that we can do in terms of um, manipulating the data. However, base maps aren't the only type of raster data that we have within GIS. So here I've got another raster layer. <clears throat> and this is a digital surface model, so elevation data. And this is one of the things that raster data is useful for, is when we've got data that's continuous across an entire area. So while vector data sets are quite good at displaying discrete objects like buildings, for example, um, 
it would be very difficult with vector data to display something continuous like elevation. There are ways that we can do it. We can use contour lines, for example, um, but there's still gaps there within the data. So by using a raster data set, um, we now have continuous elevation data across our area. And if we use the info tool here, we can click on any point and we can actually get the value of elevation, so 87.497 meters um, above sea level in this instance, at any point across our area. And we can do further analysis with this. So with the raster tools we have available to us, we could reclassify this to identify areas below and above and below a certain threshold, for example. Um, or we can visualize the data in different ways. So for example, rather than gray, we could apply a color ramp um, to help, help visualize the data. So it's not tr quite true that, that raster data is dumb data. Um, and we do have attributes associated with it because this elevation value here is in itself an attribute value. And obviously elevation isn't the only type of continuous data that we have. It could be anything. It could be noise levels. It could be pollution levels. Um, it could be deprivation levels. There's all kinds of data that we can represent using raster layers if we want to show it as a continuous surface across an area. And actually what we can do with raster data doesn't end there because our first base map was a, a color image. Um, our elevation data was what is known as a single band image. So a raster layer containing just one set of values. Um, but we could also have what are known as multi-band images. So these are raster layers where each of our pixels actually has a number of values associated with it. And actually any color image is a multi-band raster. So a color image by default contains values for red, green, and blue. They're the three colors of light that we can see, um, and they're the three colors of light that our computer monitor uses to display the colors of the raster. And if I click on a pixel in this satellite image, um, we can see that in fact, the image that I'm looking at now contains four bands. Um, in this case, band one will be blue light, band two will be green light, band three will be red light, and band four will be near infrared. So what I'm displaying on the screen at the moment is actually what's called a true color composite image made up from the blue, green, and red bands that give us a true color image um, equivalent to, to what we would see if we were looking down from space. But we can actually manipulate this a bit further, we can switch around the bands that we're looking at. So I could change it, for example, so that our red band is actually not displaying red, it's displaying near infrared. Um, I'm going to use the green band to display red and somewhat counterintuitively, the blue band to display green. And I can apply that and we now have what's called a false color composite image. So I'm actually displaying different bands. Um, and in this case, near infrared is showing up as bright red, which is showing us where we've got nice, healthy vegetation. And again, we can check that by clicking on that pixel um, and seeing the value for band four, which is near infrared. We can see how that's much brighter than, than the other bands. So while Raster data doesn't have attributes in quite the same way that our vector data sets do. Um, it's not quite true to say that it's dumb data. Each pixel does have values associated with it, and we can use those values to carry out further analysis, whether that's a single value like elevation, or whether it actually has multiple values, as in the case of multiband satellite imagery, um, which allows us to carry out tasks like image classification which use the patterns in brightness across different bands to identify different land cover types across our image. Okay, and that's 
in a nutshell, the difference between raster and vector data types within GIS.